What a day full of divine goodness this has been. But there is yet still more to come. I'm sure well, we all appreciate the anxious care Brother Noel has for the kingdom work and we are at one with him in our desire to see the expansion continue to grow. So we will give very earnest attention as he talks to us now on shepherding the sheep with skillfulness. Please, Brother Noel. It is indeed a joy to see so many overseers sitting here in the center section of Yankee Stadium. And I'm sure that all of you are desirous of one thing, shepherding the sheep with skillfulness. It is a responsibility that Jehovah puts upon overseers. It is a divine will that sheep should be gathered today and God has arranged for overseers to take care of these sheep after they are gathered. The time has come for the separating of the people of all the nations and this separating work is being done by the preaching of the good news of the kingdom not only by you overseers but by all of those in your congregation but being in the overseers position places a great responsibility upon you. So those who hear the good news due to our efforts are being gathered today as sheep and so then they come under the divine favor of Jehovah God and also under his protection. We should always keep in mind that Jehovah is the great shepherd just as David stated. Jehovah is my shepherd. I shall lack nothing. In grassy pastures he makes me to lie down. By well-watered resting places he conducts me. Jehovah is chiefly responsible then for gathering the sheep since 1919. And so we see not only the anointed being gathered, but we also see a great crowd of other sheep being gathered in. It was at that time in 1919 that the remnant of the kingdom class, Christ's spiritual brothers, started to be gathered. And for a number of years thereafter, the 144,000 had to be brought to its completion. And today, as you had learned later, or earlier in this convention, there's just about 15,000 of those of the anointed, professing to be of the Bride of Christ, still with us. These were scattered during the cloudy and dark day of World War I. But now the remnant are being used to do shepherding work. They have gone out with the kingdom message, doing the divine will during these past years, serving the sheep and bringing them in and feeding them with the necessary spiritual food. All of these sheep, both classes, Jehovah has made now into one cooperative company or flock all being heirs of life in the new world of righteousness. All these sheep have been delivered from the false, greedy oppressors of Christendom and have come under the loving care of the one who laid down his earthly life for them, Jesus Christ, the son of David, the shepherd. Jehovah has faithfully done everything he could for us but there are some things, too, that we must do. We must be faithful. And as overseers, we certainly must be faithful shepherds. We read in Ezekiel, the 34th chapter, I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them, even my shepherd David. He shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, Jehovah, will be their God, and my servant David, prince among them. I, Jehovah, have spoken it, and ye, my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, are men, and I am your God, saith the Lord Jehovah. 
So we see from this that Jehovah God is the principal shepherd looking after his sheep, and these sheep are men. But he has also chosen others to do shepherding. One particular individual was Christ Jesus, the greater David, and he certainly took on the responsibility of a shepherd, and he set an example for every one of us. The scripture tells us at Psalm 78, he chose David his servant, he brought him in to be a shepherd over Jacob his people, and over Israel his possession. And he began to shepherd them according to the integrity of his heart. And with the skillfulness of his hands, he began leading them. We must be skillful as shepherds, and skill means the ability that comes from knowledge or from practice, one's aptitude. A shepherd must have the knowledge of God's word. How does he want sheep cared for? How do you want to look after the sheep? Do you want them always to recognize Jehovah God as the great one of the universe and also look to Christ Jesus? Or are you just interested in having these sheep look at you? No, you are not interested in having them look to you, but you must take on the position of a real shepherd. Therefore, it is necessary for you to have knowledge, and you must put that knowledge to work. A shepherd is not filled with awkwardness. He's not clumsy with the use of God's word and in caring for the other sheep. When the right shepherd was upon the earth, he used the word of God very skillfully. Therefore, we who are under shepherds must also use the word of God skillfully. Overseers today, too, are shepherds, and they must handle God's sheep with the skillfulness of their hands and lead them just as David did when he looked after the children of Israel and as Christ Jesus did when he looked after his disciples. There is a great reward for faithful shepherding. You, are only, you not only save yourself if you are a good overseer or shepherd, but you're going to save others also, other sheep. We are all sheep, whether we're an overseer or not. We are sheep under the great shepherd Jehovah and the right shepherd that he has chosen, Jesus Christ. Jesus himself said, I am the right shepherd the right shepherd surrenders his soul in behalf of the sheep. Jesus truly did this. He also said, I am the right shepherd, and I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, knew his responsibility as an under-shepherd, and he pointed out that responsibility to other shepherds who were the older men among the congregations, the mature ones. And he said at 1 Peter 5, 2 to 4, shepherd the flock of God among you, not under compulsion, but willingly, neither for the love of dishonest gain, but eagerly, neither is lording it over those who are God's inheritance, but becoming examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd has been made manifest, he will receive, or rather you will receive, the unfadable crown of glory. All of you overseers, you branch servants, district servants, circuit servants, congregational servants, and ministerial servants, do you feel the charge that Jehovah's Word places upon you as an under-shepherd, as an overseer, we have agreed, all of us, through our dedication and taking on the responsibility of an overseer, to do the commandments of God. And here is one of those commandments. Shepherd the flock of God among you. How are you doing it? Under compulsion? Out of shame because you were appointed? Would you rather do something else? 
Would you want to be free from the responsibility? Peter says, do it willingly. Do you do it for the love of dishonest gain, for prominence you receive in the congregation, the influence you hold over the people, personal pride at being an overseer, or do you do it eagerly? Do you have a warm love for all in the congregation? Do you recognize that all of them belong to Jehovah God? That the congregation you are associated with is truly the congregation of God? Are you irreprehensible? Are you the husband of one wife? Are your habits moderate? Are you sound in mind? Are you orderly? Do you love the stranger? Are you qualified to teach? These are things that Paul wrote Timothy about and also Titus. Or are you an overseer who is lording it over those who are God's inheritance? Do you believe that they belong to you? Or do you accept the responsibility that God puts on you as an under-shepherd. Do you comprehend fully that you are a shepherd boy looking after your master's inheritance, God's inheritance? The footnote in the, in the New World Translation of 1 Peter 5, 3 says, lording it over those allotted to you. We appreciate that God has a great organization in the world, and all these sheep are God's sheep. But he has also organized his people today into smaller groups or congregations. He has allotted a certain number of sheep to you. Are you lording it over those allotted to you? How are you handling God's sheep? Are you an example to the flock? By example, are you striving to maturity? Do you prepare your parts for the service meetings? Do you take your share in the theocratic school? Are you preparing, prepared with your lessons at the congregational book studies? What do you do in the house-to-house -house witnessing? Do you conduct home Bible studies? Do you make back calls? Do you engage in magazine work? Summing all this up, are you preaching this good news of the kingdom and being a true example to all the sheep that have been allotted to you? Overseers, when you have followed the example and the counsel of Peter, and you have so shown such warm love and hospitality toward the flock of God and strangers, then when the chief shepherd has been made manifest, you will receive the unfadable crown of glory. For the remnant, it will mean joint heirship with Christ Jesus in heavenly glory. For the other sheep, life in the new world. And for many, a position as princes in God's new world. Are all you overseers trying to do the same thing? Paul was an overseer, trying to turn the other sheep away from the authority of Satan and to the only true God. Are we doing the same? And after you have turned them to God, are you trying to keep them there in the New World Society doing the divine will? How much effort do you put forth? How much energy do you expend? How much warm love do you show towards everyone that has been allotted to you? Recognizing that we are under shepherds, how must we faithfully and skillfully deal with sheep like humans, all of whom belong to Jehovah God? Let us keep that in mind constantly. Christ Jesus set the pattern. He was a faithful shepherd. 
Now, what are the essential features of a shepherd? One, to lead. Two, to feed. And three, to shepherd. How does an overseer take on the responsibility of leadership? Jesus showed true leadership because he himself submitted to being led by Jehovah, the great shepherd. He said, my soul he refreshes. He leads me in the tracks of righteousness for his name's sake. He certainly left it up to his father, the shepherd, to guide him in the right course. Faithful and skillful under-shepherds must lead the sheep in the tracks of righteousness. They can't lead him outside of truth or what God has set forth in his divine will. An under-shepherd must be mindful of the divine will and the example and mature counsel that God's word sets forth and they must lead the sheep in that way. One who leads must have foremost in his mind the sanctifying of Jehovah's name and his kingdom, and he must want to see his will done. Jesus taught us all to pray, Our Father in the heavens, let your name be sanctified. Let your kingdom come. Let your will come to pass as in heaven, also upon the earth. Jesus said, as recorded in Matthew 6, 33, keep on then seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness, and if we do that, all the other things are going to be added unto you. Paul was interested in setting forth right leadership. He said to the Corinthians, become imitators of me, even as I am of Christ. You then, overseers, must be the right kind of examples. And if you want your sheep in your little congregation becoming imitators of you, let it be even as you are imitating Christ Jesus. He also showed leadership quali qualities when he said at Acts 20:20, 20, 20, while I did not hold back from telling you any of the things that were profitable, nor from teaching you publicly and from house to house. An overseer today should be an expert and very skillful in house to house teaching, in backcall activity, and in Bible study work, giving the true lead to the training program. Sometimes overseers in congregation think, well, the circuit servant's coming around, that's his work. The training program applies to him. But you, as an overseer, must work in conjunction with the circuit servant, the district servant, the branch servant, the whole organization of God to get this training program going well. Who are we trying to train? The sheep that are allotted to you in your congregation. And certainly you are anxious to see them grow up strong, healthy, hardy, so that in turn, later on, they may be able to become overseers and lead sheep too. An overseer today should certainly be skillful in taking care of sheep. A good shepherd will lead sheep to good grass, to clear water. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, said, and gave us a proper lead when he said, Guide or lead them to the fountains of water of life. Revelation 7:17. 7, Are you, as an overseer, anxious to feed on good food, that which is convenient for you and provided through the faithful and discreet slave class? And will you drink of the water of life freely and see to it that others can drink and eat from the same pasture and from the same waters that God is feeding you? Skillful leadership requires that overseers have accurate knowledge of the truth and have an excellent acquaintance with the sheep so that they can give proper leadership. Are you acquainted with your congregation? 
Listen what is written in John 10:3. The sheep listen to his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Do you know every member in your congregation by name? Are you able to talk to them? Are you anxious when they come into your congregational hall, your kingdom hall? Are you anxious to meet other people that they bring in and be acquainted with them? Jesus was. He knew all the sheep. These are the words of Jesus. So then let us remember that all of these sheep belong to Jehovah God and those allotted to you, you should know. We are under shepherds. Let us not be strangers to the sheep, nor should we be strangers to God. Get acquainted with Jehovah's sheep. Know the individuals, not only by name, but by associating with them in the field service work in the congregation of God too. Now sheep need to be fed. How are you feeding them? The faithful and discreet slave, whom his master appointed over his domestics, to give them their food at the proper time, certainly is making provision for proper food for all of us, overseers and other sheep. Do you see to it that this good food is being given to the sheep? Are you encouraging in the sheep to eat this food that comes through Jehovah's organization? How much time do you spend encouraging them to come to meetings if they are very frequently absent? How often do you take them out in the field service and ask them to go with you? How much time and energy do you spend to keep these sheep strong by eating the right food? When finding sheep, it is stated, make disciples, teaching them to observe all the things I have commanded you. No one can be fed well amid moral badness or among brothers harboring envy or strife. That's why Peter wrote at 1 Peter 2, 1 to 3, accordingly put away all moral badness and all deceitfulness and hypocrisy and envies and all kinds of backbiting. And as newborn infants, form a longing for the unadulterated milk belonging to the word that through it you may grow to salvation provided you have tasted that the Lord is kind. Overseers should form a longing for the right kind of free food, and they should want to see to it that the sheep get the unadulterated milk of the word. Show them how good it is for them the sheep, for them the sheep will grow unto salvation. All sheep novices and mature ones must hunger and they must thirst for righteousness. So overseers must look after the feeding and the drinking, seeing that they never get hungry and they never get thirsty. Happy are those hungering and thirsting for righteousness since they will be filled. Are you, as an under-shepherd, seeing to it that the sheep in your care are filled? If the overseer does not see to it that they are filled, it will be like putting them on a starvation diet. Overseers seeing to it that they get the truth from God's word will never need to worry about whether sheep will grow on to maturity. because. Whoever drinks from the water that I will give him will never get thirsty, but the water that I will give him will become to him a fountain of waters bubbling up to impart everlasting life. Now are we as overseers seeing to it that this water is continually bubbling so that they may get everlasting life? An overseer must see to it that all of the sheep keep drinking of this water which imparts everlasting life. Jehovah is good too in that he provides good fruit every month as stated in Revelation 22 2, trees of life producing 12 crops of fruit yielding their fruits each month. 
the proper spirit of an overseer should be to see to it that his responsibility is fulfilled and that he gives the sheep all that they require to keep them in the spirit of surface service and then keep them in that good spirit of God so that they will serve him for eternity. All of the New World Society keep on saying, Come! And let anyone hearing say, Come! And let anyone thirsting come. Let anyone that wishes take life's water free. Overseers are not stingy. They are not looking after the sheep for personal gain. They have received freely and they want to give freely. It is the understanding of the divine will that builds us up and keeps us alive and rejoicing in our great privileges of service. And Proverbs 4, 20 and 22 says, To my words, do pay attention. They are life. To these finding them and health to all their flesh. Think of that. If we give the other sheep the proper words, the proper food, the proper drink, if we give them the truth from God's word and show them the divine will, it's life to them. It's health to their flesh. So then overseers must remember that all persons in the congregation and all the new ones who are being gathered by those of the congregation into the New World Society must be looked after by the shepherd so that they will never become thirsty and never become hungry. It is important for overseers to continually be mindful of the divine will and help all the other sheep to be mindful of that divine will. As shepherds or overseers, we see that we must lead the sheep. We have to feed them. And as good shepherds, we must lead them and be a shepherd. So what does a shepherd do? He tends and guards and protects sheep. There must be real integrity on the part of a shepherd. He must be a person that is looking after every one of his sheep, protecting him from any outside danger. Our year's text points out the importance of this in these words. As for me, in my integrity I shall walk. So David, when he took on the responsibility of being a shepherd, said, he began to shepherd them according to the integrity of his heart. How is your integrity? Do you truly love all those that have been allotted to you and are in your care? Jesus said to Peter, for the benefit of all of his disciples, shepherd my little sheep. Peter later said, shepherd the flock of God in your care. Paul was very definite when he said, pay attention to yourselves, you overseers, and to all of the flock among which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers to shepherd the congregation of God. So then there is no question about our being shepherds and having the responsibility of looking after the sheep, keeping them under our protection, it is not just a matter of leading them and feeding them, but there comes along with it the great responsibility of protecting the sheep. Remember what Jude said, how he gave such wise counsel in the third and fourth verse of his letter. I exhort you to put up a hard fight for the faith that was once for all times delivered to the Holy Ones. My reason is that certain men have slipped in who have long ago been appointed by the scriptures to the judgment described below, ungodly men, turning the undeserved kindness of our God into an excuse for loose conduct and proving false to our only owner and Lord, Jesus Christ. Overseers, must keep alert to those ungodly men who slip into the organization 
trying to t turn the undeserved kindness of God into an excuse for loose conduct. Sometimes even overseers do this very thing. They become haughty and proud and think that they can get away with anything. So being in these exalted positions as shepherds rather than protecting the sheep, they take advantage of them and go so far as to killing them because of their immoral conduct. No matter what position an overseer holds within the organization, even that of a branch servant, a district servant, a circuit servant, an overseer in the congregational or a ministerial servant, don't think for one minute that you can take advantage of your position by acting immorally. God has already assigned these to judgment, and their judgment is destruction. So be careful that this never happens to you. If such slip into the congregation, then see to it that they are disfellowshipped and thrown out. We don't want them around us because we want a pure organization that will bring glory and honor to Jehovah God. When overseers are looking after the interest of the sheep, then they're going to give them the necessary protection to keep them within the organization clean and wholesome. I agree it isn't pleasant to get into trouble or to start it or to have to dig around in it. But if an overseer does not chase it down when it is there, he might lose his whole flock. He might even lose his own life because of being a negligent overseer. Where are we? Well, we're in this old world. We are not in the new one yet, but we are in the new world society, but that isn't in the new world. Jesus said, he was in this world, but he was certainly not a part of it. We are in this same position, in an old world, but we're not a part of it. That is why we have the admonition, look, I am sending you forth as sheep amongst wolves. Therefore, prove yourselves cautious as serpents and yet innocent as doves. Overseers, do not have to wait until an overt act is performed before he puts a person on probation or has to go so far as disfellowshipping the man. If he is a wide awake shepherd, he will recognize sick sheep and he will try to give them the tender care that they need so that they will be well again before they get so sick that nothing will help them and they'll only be fit for death. James wrote at 5, 14, and 15, Is there anyone sick among you? Let him call the older men of the congregation to him and let them pray over him, rubbing him with oil in the name of Jehovah. And the prayer of the faith and the prayer of faith will make the indisposed one well and Jehovah will raise him up. Also, if he has committed sins, it will be forgiven him. Sometimes these six sheep do not have judgment enough to call on the older men or the overseers in the congregation to come in and pray over them. What must the overseer do then? The shepherd should go to that sick one. If you're a good shepherd, you'll know who are absent from the congregation. You'll know the ones that are not in the flock at the watchtower study, the service meetings, the theocratic school, the congregational meetings. If you're a good shepherd and they're protecting them, you'll wonder about these that are not in your flock, that are in your charge. So then waiting until he gets so sick that he will call you, why not call on him so that you may give him the necessary aid? The kind thing for a shepherd to do 
is to call on the sick one. Maybe then he will confess to you why he is sick, what he has done, why he lacks spiritual food. If he confesses your sin, his sins to you, you can show him the way to go. And certainly if he confesses to the Father, the Father will forgive him of his sins. This is a kindness on the part of the shepherd. Think what joy will be yours as an overseer. If you would help one of these six sheep in keeping him in the organization and building him up to strength again, think of the joy and the happiness that is yours for making one well. <coughs> this takes skillful handling, and shepherds should not be offensive. They must handle sick sheep tenderly. It must be done with kindness. Recall what John wrote to us. Do not marvel, brothers, that the world hates you, we know we have passed over from death to life because we love the brothers. Do you love your sheep and your care so much that would you that you would take off a night from your home or some other time, a Saturday afternoon, a Sunday afternoon, or a Sunday evening after meeting to go to one of these persons that you believe to be sick and help them? Why would you do it? Because you have passed from death to life. Because you love the brothers. That's why you do it as an overseer. Your heart overflows with warmth for these brothers of yours in your care. Sometimes this love is not appreciated, but it must be expressed when overseers see sick sheep. They cannot cure them by scolding them and yelling at them. Let all maliciousness, bitterness, and anger, and wrath, and screaming, and abusive speech be taken away from you, along with all injuriousness, said Paul to the Ephesians in the fourth chapter. But become kind to one another, tenderly compassionate, freely forgiving one another, just as God also by Christ freely forgave you. Just think what Jehovah God has done for every one of us through Christ Jesus. He's forgiven us of our sins, and it is possible now for us to gain eternal life. Paul said that love is long-suffering, and love is obliging. Love is kind. It helps people. Love goes into action towards those of the other sheep who might become spiritually ill. Overseers help them. Help them before they die. Give them that food, that oil, that prayer that they need. Overseers remember that you are God's chosen ones to look after all of these other sheep, not only the healthy ones, not only the ones that go out with you in service, not only the ones that come to meeting, but all those who have dedicated themselves to do Jehovah's will. By Holy Spirit, you have been appointed as an overseer, as a shepherd of God's congregation. So then, as God's chosen ones, Clothe yourself with tender affections of compassion, kindness, lowliness of mind, mildness, and long-suffering. While all of, all of us who have come into Jehovah's organization want to keep walking by Spirit and develop within us the fruits of the Spirit, still the overseers more so because overseers are examples. Every overseer should remember that the fruitage of the Spirit is love. It is joy. It's peace. The fruit of the Spirit is long-suffering. 
kindness, goodness, faith, mildness, self-control. Against such things, there is absolutely no law. You can't govern these things like love or joy or peace. There is no fence around them, no restriction, no restriction. You can pour out all the love and kindness and long-suffering that you want to to all those that come in your organization. An overseer in a congregation should never be of the attitude that someone should know better and therefore he does not bother with him. True, after people have been in the truth a long time, maybe they should know better. But we can never take the attitude of indifference and say, well, I'm going to let him alone. No, he may be sick. He may need just that encouraging word from you. Maybe you've been so busy in the congregation that you haven't had time to talk to him for quite a while, and you don't know his mental disposition. But if you took a little time off and called upon him as an overseer and showed your interest in him, showing that you wanted to give him the necessary protection for his life, like you would any other sheep, a new one, just as well as an old one. He'd love you for it. Remember, if we are living by spirit, let us go on walking orderly, also by spirit. Let us not become egotistical, stirring up competition with one another, envying one another. <coughs> Sometimes individuals in the uh, congregation do not show any gratitude or appreciation for what we are doing for them. But then, are we trying to get glory for ourselves? Or are we trying to help other people live? Are we trying to feed those sheep the proper food and give them the proper drink, the water of life? Show yourselves to be sons of the Most High because he is kind toward the unthankful and the wicked. Do you know that Jehovah God makes it rain upon the just and the unjust? Don't you recall that the sun shines upon the wicked as well as the good? You do not want any interest or gain because of your goodness, because of your love, because of your kindness to others. That's part of our work as Christians. Jehovah is not going to get any gain because of his goodness to us. He's always on the giving side. Jehovah continually gives and gives and gives. Overseers are shepherds of sheep. They're like Jehovah the wonderful shepherd and the son Christ Jesus. So then, you as overseers and shepherds of sheep, you should keep giving water to the sheep and keep giving them the good grass, the food from the trees, the fruit that comes out every month, and you should give them the protection that they deserve, the tender care and the kindness. And the shepherd, will always enjoy being with sheep that feed from his hands. It'll give him a satisfaction and a joy and a glow that comes from showing love to another. Remember, we have a great shepherd looking after us, and whether we be one of the little flock or the other sheep, or an overseer appointed of the flock of God, all of us together say this, Jehovah is my shepherd. Even though I walk in the valley of deep shadow, I fear nothing bad, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff are the things that comfort me. You arrange before me a table in front of those showing hostility to me. With oil you have greased my head. My cup is well filled. Surely goodness and loving kindness themselves will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Jehovah 
to the length of days. Overseers emulate the great shepherd. He is a divine one. He is not like the mimic god Satan, who is filled with hatred and destruction. God even shows kindness to the wicked and the unthankful ones. One appointed as an overseer must always be shepherding the sheep with skillfulness, with the skillfulness, skillfulness of an under-shepherd, always dealing in kindness with those who are in his charge. A good shepherd will keep the sheep in the organization. He will never let them get outside. At least he will not try or neglect his work and allow them to get outside. Jesus built up an organization around himself, and he kept them. He watched over them in every respect. He knew they belonged to his father, but he was a shepherd appointed by his father, and that is why he said in his final prayer, after introducing the memorial supper of his death, when I was with them, I used to watch over them out of respect for your own name, which you have given me and I have kept them, and not one of them is destroyed except the son of destruction, so that the scripture has been fulfilled. Jesus kept the sheep together, and after Pentecost, they showed that they had one mind, and that individually, their minds were being guided by one spirit, Jehovah's spirit. In Jesus' day, it was a small congregation. Now in these last days, the prophecies show us that a great crowd, which no man was able to number out of all the nations and tribes and peoples and tongues, is standing before the throne and before the Lamb. More under-shepherds are needed. There are more groups that have been allotted to shepherds. Last year, there were 16,883 congregations. Very likely by the end of this service here, there will be many more congregations. Surely when 60 to 70,000 people come into Jehovah's organization in one year, it requires many, many more to take on the responsibility of an overseer. It will mean more district servants, more circuit servants, more congregational servants, and more assistant servants or ministerial servants. As this great crowd grows, more shepherds will be appointed to look after God's flock. More persons will have to take on the responsibility. Will you, you who are sitting here, other places in the auditorium, when that opportunity or call comes to you to look after the flock of God, will you take on this responsibility? The sheep. While others may be appointed to these positions of responsibility, the sheep, too, must be of the right mind in recognizing the organization that Jehovah God, through his Son, Christ Jesus, has set up. Therefore, all of us must have due respect for those who are appointed as overseers, regardless of who the individual may be. For it says, Be obedient to those governing you, and be submissive, for they are keeping watch over your souls are those who will render an account that they may do this with joy and not with sighing, for this would be damaging to you. So overseers, shepherd, the flock of God skillfully within Jehovah's organization. Overseers should continually pray to Jehovah God to open their hearts and their minds to the understanding of the divine will. They particularly should be feeding upon the Word of God and be studying it. They should not allow themselves to speculate, as some like to do. That is why Paul had to speak to Timothy in this manner at 2 Timothy 2, 23 to 26. Turn down foolish and speculative questioning, knowing they produce fights. But a slave of the Lord does not need to fight but needs to be tactful toward all, qualified to teach, keeping himself restrained under evil, instructing with mildness those not favorably disposed, as perhaps 
God may give them repentance leading to an accurate knowledge of truth and they may come back to their proper senses out from the snare of the devil seeing that they have been caught alive by him for the will of that one. But we as overseers and shepherds of God's flock certainly want them to know the divine will. So let us be tactful. Let us be qualified to teach. Let us show this mildness and helpfulness. An overseer must be an individual who has the ability to use the knowledge that he has gained from God's word effectively. He must be a competent individual. He must be proficient with the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. He must know how to guide sheep with tactfulness. He cannot be an awkward man or clumsy in the handling of sheep or in directing them. He must allow God's Spirit to guide and help him, and this will only come through the acquaintance of the individual with God's Word. He must strengthen his faith in Jehovah God and must continually give God exclusive devotion for by doing this he will gain everlasting life. Overseers should always have in mind what Jude said at verse 20 and 21, but you, beloved ones, by building up yourselves on your most holy faith and praying with Holy Spirit, Keep yourselves in God's love while you are waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ with everlasting life in view. Yes, you must keep building up yourselves. Never think that you have reached a point in life that you can't improve or get better. Remember, as an overseer, your work is not only taking care of sheep, but a shepherd also takes care of himself. A shepherd eats too. He also drinks. He gets his rest. To be a good shepherd, he must keep himself healthy spiritually, physically, morally, so that he can be a true leader and guide for all the sheep that have been allotted to him in his congregation. Jesus speaking to those who would become overseers later and knowing that they would be suffering hard times said this, which also applies today. Pay attention to yourselves, that your hearts never become weighed down with overeating and heavy drinking and anxieties of life, and suddenly that day be instantly upon you as a snare, for it will come in upon all those dwelling upon the face of the earth. Keep awake, then, all the time making supplication that you may succeed in escaping all these things that are destined to occur and to hold your position before the Son of Man. Peter, in speaking to those who would shepherd the flock of God, said, In like manner, you younger men be in subjection to the older men, but all of you gird yourselves with humility of mind toward one another, because God opposes the haughty ones, but he gives undeserved kindness to the humble ones. Overseers, remember that Jehovah loves you. He loves you especially because he has given you more responsibility, and he wants to see you take care of that responsibility. He loves the little flock, and expresses his concern for them. And he also loves the other sheep because we see it through his arrangement that these are being gathered together now by the hundreds of thousands. Remember Paul's admonition at Colossians 3.12. Accordingly, as God's chosen ones, holy and loved, clothe yourselves with the tender affections of compassion, kindness, lowliness of mind, mildness, and long-suffering. That should be the spirit of every one of the remnant today and every one, especially of those who are in positions of overseers. For if they have these qualities, if they have made their minds over, 
then they can set the right example for the many other sheep that are coming into the organization so that they might walk in the paths of righteousness. But then the word of God does not change towards the other sheep. While these words do apply to the anointed, the same principles apply to every one that God brings into his organization. And every person that dedicates himself to Jehovah's work must have compassion, kindness, lowliness of mind, mildness, and long-suffering. So take care of yourself. Look after yourself, overseers. Have the right spirit. Then you will be assuring yourself of everlasting life. Every one of us who is shepherding the sheep with skillfulness should fully appreciate that we are living in the last days of this devilish world organization. Jehovah has given us a great work to do. The only ones he is using are those in the New World Society, the remnant and the other sheep. We know the times in which we live and we appreciate that we are truly signs and wonders in the times of the end. God has brought forth the remnant as signs and wonders and all of the other sheep have seen these signs and wonders in the earth and have flocked to them and come under Jehovah's protection and guidance. So John's words are most fitting. The world is passing away and so is its desire. But he that does the will of God remains forever. These words are especially applicable to shepherds of the flock as well as to the flock itself. In these last days, in the times of the end, we as overseers shepherding the flock of God skillfully know that we must do the divine will and by his undeserved kindness every overseer on earth will do the divine will henceforth. We want to do it because to do the divine will means we will remain forever having life eternal. We want to set the right example for all those who have been brought into Jehovah's organization. And you as overseers shepherding the sheep of God will continue to do it skillfully and undoubtedly after this entire assembly, the Divine Will International Assembly of Jehovah's Witnesses has ended, you will see more clearly the great work and responsibility that rests upon your shoulders. And one who has responsibility has a capacity of greater happiness within Jehovah's organization. So none of you who are called upon in the future to take care of sheep because the organization is expanding. Do not push away these responsible positions as overseers. For with overseership, with greater responsibility comes joy, gladness, a fullness of heart for service to Jehovah God. Hold on to those positions and bring praise to God in shepherding the flock of God skillfully. Thank you very much, Brother Noam, for giving us this counsel on how we should shepherd the sheep in, with a skillful way. The attendance for this evening in the pool grounds outside and inside is 93,886. In the pool grounds, we have 54,160, and the grand total is 148,046. Now shall we all stand and sing song number 33, then close our meeting by prayer.